Good morning. Good morning, everybody that's in my stream right now. <laughs> hey, Inquisitor. 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 Hey, I did sleep good. I've been sleeping for, I think I was here for 18 hours. 18 hours. I'm about to pull out two and a half hours away from where I've got to be. I'm waiting for another two minutes before I leave because I want to make my pre-trip a little longer than eight minutes it took. I'd like to at least do a 10 minute on my pre-trip. Just in case they ask me questions about it. Oh boy, I am ready for today. I was told that I get to go home yesterday and then I didn't get to go home. But they said if I if I do everything I'm supposed to right now, then I'll be able to go home. I'll be able to go home today. Mm -hmm. Great. I got my, I think it's a weekend right now. I think today's Saturday. Um, it's nice to get home. It's nice to get home. <laughs> I don't know how to finish that phrase. Other than it's just, it's nice to get home, but we'll get home. We get home. It's time we roll out. Autobots roll out. This is a really neat little truck stop I found on the map. It's off the path, but I, I had uh, 14 minutes left on my DOT clock before I was going to get a violation. And so I, I couldn't find any major truck stops. Found this little thing a couple miles off the highway. And boy, was it nice. It was so... There was a lot of rednecks out here with big pickup trucks. I heard them burning out all night. But uh, I tell you, it was still quieter than sitting next to 20 reefers. As you said, a big truck stop, but it's like out there in peaceful, tranquil middle America, nothing around you. But then all of a sudden, the reefer trailers start coming in with their reefers all crappy all night long, just shaking the ground. Bad news. I'm heading to Fort Dodge right now. I'm, I'm leaving this little town. I don't even know if there's a freaking name. I think we're just in a county. But, um, yeah. Yeah, I survived. Survived the night out here. This place had a Chester, Chester's fried chicken inside there. And, uh, when I, when I got here, there was like 20 people at this little gas station all waiting for this chicken. Like, oh my gosh, it must be good stuff. It must be good stuff. So I had to grab me some. And I don't eat the, I don't eat none of that stuff. I'm only eating salads and, and boiled eggs on this trip. Two weeks of salads and boiled eggs. I'm trying to get down to, I want to look like Justin. I want a Justin Bieber body. That's what I tell my wife. I'm going to get my Bieber body. <laughs> uh she hates skinny guys. She hates little skinny guys. And I, I'm like, I'm going to get me a beaver body. <laughs> and uh, that's what I tell her every time. I'm like, nope, I'm, I'm working on my beaver body. So hopefully when I get home and I um, I got my beaver body back, my beaver body back. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have a body like just a beaver. I'm going to be 50 years old. <laughs> I'm going to be, I mean, I'm not going to be 50 years old. I'll be 50 years old soon enough, but, uh, 
50 year old man, oh, I have a 40, 70, 48 year old man telling his wife, I'm working on my Bieber body. <laughs> yeah. Bieber body. Bieber body. And then when I get my Bieber body, I'm going to sell a, a how to VHS tape about how to get a Bieber body. <laughs> it's only on VHS, it's not downloadable or streamable. All right, we're on the highway. All right, boys and girls. Ladies and gentlemen, we are on the road. Yeah, we're rolling this morning. We are rolling this morning. I had to sit there for about 10 hours for um I sat there for 10 hours I think I got there yesterday morning but my clock wouldn't reset till midnight and then once my clock reset my schedule wasn't until almost 10 a.m. when I could deliver so I couldn't just leave at midnight and go there and wait because that would have started my clock and then it would have ran out oh I ran out yesterday Oh, yeah. Hey, what's up, India out there? What you doing, India? India. Pizza. Pizza. Right. Good morning. Wake up, wake up, wake up. You're waking up with a trucker. Middle America here driving across the state of Iowa. I started in Fort Madison, Iowa yesterday, and I'm driving to Fort Dodge today. I'm going to Fort Dodge, I'm going to load up. They said if I load up at Fort Dodge, I can go home and then unload on Monday or Tuesday in Kentucky. In Kentucky. How many days does it take to get to Kentucky? Well, it takes about two days of driving and then I deliver on the third day. On the third day, I'll, I'll pick up. I'll pick up and, and drive really far and yeah. Girls, are you excited? People said I'm an NPC. That is KFC because I'm too fat. I'm too fat, but I'm working on my beaver body. I tell you what, one day I'm going to be on camera on this channel and you're going to see me with my beaver body. You go, damn, is that Justin Bieber? That's Justin Bieber's grandpa? <laughs> Granddaddy? No, no, no. I, I think I don't think so. I think I'm gonna have nice my muscles, and I, I'm gonna need some hair plugs. I'm gonna pull some hair from my butt cheeks and put it right back on my bald spot on my head. That way, that way, all the people think that I'm Justin Bieber because I'm gonna Bieber body. A be is that is that a good thing to have? Is a Bieber body? I don't know. My wife doesn't think so. Right now I'm in Iowa. Um, I mean, if you look at the sky, it's kind of glowing. See, it's glowing over there. I don't know. It's uh, I'm in uh, middle of Iowa. I'm in the, the middle. I was on the east side over at Fort Fort Madison, and now I'm on the going to the west side, Fort Dodge. It's, it's kind of close over to um, the next state over, which is the Nebraska. Nebraska. Towards Omaha. I see some weird stuff, man. I see some weird stuff just the other day. I was looking at these trees in this forest next to this truck stop. I'm just looking at it and mem mesmerized by the swinging stuff and the, the, the stuff. And, and then I, I look real closely and I've been staring at a bag of poop hanging from the street. So I got a video of me. Wait, who's that? Somebody ding ding. Somebody booked the chat just now. Crack. Cracker. Cracker. Hey, Cracker out there. Appreciate you. Spread the love out there. Spread the love. Buying this fat guy more KFC. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you out there. My wife appreciates that too. And my wife thinks that my YouTube channel is stupid. You know, people hang out with me. I think that's all right. All right, all right, all right. I appreciate you 
spreading some love out there. Yeah, just a bag hanging from the tree in the wind. I'm like, oh, it's it's like that movie where they're they're showing a bag floating in the wind and it's all arctic and, and beautiful. Everyone's like, oh, it's beautiful. And then I'm looking at this bag swinging in the tree. I'm like, oh, oh wait, what's what's weighing it down? And like, oh, it's a, a trucker's bag of poop, but it just hung in the tree. <laughs> and I'll be honest with you, I go to this location all the time, and every time since before I worked here, this bag's been hanging there. So it's, it might be petrified. Calm. Appreciate you hanging out with me. Hopefully you subscribe. I stream every day. Mm -hmm. Look at my channel. My streams are I'm pretty aggressive with it. I, I upload videos every day. I got uh, I got my contact information in most of my video descriptions. And um, people uh, send me videos to put up too that they think that I'm missing. And uh, so I upload all kinds of videos out here. Uh, my goal is one one goal is to uh, put things on my channel that I want to watch out here on the road funny things i make the videos i share videos and um everything's trucker oriented nothing is um nothing is really uh general i, I stick pretty loyal to trucking community supernatural man sometimes i'm in the truck and i run out of time and i have to pull over on the on-ramp or an off-ramp and um Oh, uh, one time I swear that this off ramp that was haunted because my truck was making all kinds of noises. It sounded like there was people talking out. I, you know, I'd, I'd open the curtains in the truck and I'd, I'd look out there and it's just pitch black. There's nobody anywhere. This one time, I think I was recording them too. I think I was streaming that. I didn't label it accordingly because sometimes if I label things that aren't really trucking related, then YouTube punishes me. So, like, if I make a cooking video and I upload it, YouTube would say, eh. Well, I don't know what to do with you because you were trucking stuff and now you're cooking stuff. So we're just gonna we're just gonna not show anybody your videos until you figure out what you're trying to do. So I don't even know if I labeled it haunted. Hello, Ali. Hello, Ali. Hello, Orcon. Uh, sorry, I had a hard time. Man. What I did was I got a text a speech that I created for this chat and um it, it, it works really well with common names and words and stuff but sometimes you'll have some custom stuff out there or use some slang out there and then you, you stump this monkey you stump the monkey and, and i don't know what to say <laughs> am i sleep derived uh nope i'll tell you why it's almost impossible to be sleep derived these days as a trucker because i'm only allowed to drive for 10 hours and then I have to take a 10-hour break. I mean, or 11 hours, whatever you want to look at it. But I'm only allowed to have so many hours and legally I have to pull over. And like, well, how do they know if you pull over? Well, this, they got software in here that's plugged into the brain of the truck. And there's cameras in here. And so you, you can't just run crazy. It, it doesn't let you. I'd like to. I'd like to just be able to nonstop. Just drive 24 hours a day nonstop and then do a bunch of drugs and get where I got to go real quick and then everyone wins. But it just ain't going to happen. This old guy's got to pull over. Hey, Neptune. Neptune. Hey, thanks for talking about the stream today. Thanks for not swiping away so quick. Thanks for giving me a few seconds. You don't know how much that, that means to uh, us truckers out here. Just uh, trying to do what we got to do out here. And uh, when, when people come out here and show a little bit of support, man, it feels, it feels so good. I'll tell you why. Because everywhere a trucker goes, they treat us like crap. And you, I'm not crying about it, but you guys can imagine. Everywhere I go, I go to a fast food restaurant, and they treat the fast food workers treat me like crap. They know they know the hierarchy. They know they're better than us, or they know whatever they think they're better than us, or whatever. But truck truckers seem like that's one tra one job one career out there where just everyone can shit on us and it's okay because we don't live there they don't have to see us again but we have to live with the memories of everywhere we go they treat us like crap it's cool when you come onto to youtube and people people just are nice to us well i guess they're us i'm, I'm assuming that you guys are nice to all the truckers that was a beautiful corvette 
Yeah, I'm assuming that everyone's nice to truckers. At least you guys nice to me. I appreciate that. It's a, it's a change from my real life out here where everywhere I go, they treat me like I'm dirty. They treat me like I'm not smart enough. All right, Zico. Hey, Zico, thank you for coming by and clicking on my stream. Thanks for hanging out long enough to say something and not swiping away. I understand this doesn't look that exciting. I'm just cruising down the highway right now on my way to Fort Dodge. But I can tell you what, I make videos every day uh, along with my streams that I use um, my smart glasses that have cameras in them. And that's what I use to make my other videos. This is just the dash cam you guys are watching. Uh, but if you subscribe to my channel, you'll be able to check out these videos that I make with my smart glasses. They're, I call them my spy glasses because they got cameras in them. And they say Ray, they're Ray-Ban glasses so nobody knows that I'm being a creep. But I am a creep. I'm that creep at the truck stop. <laughs> the creepy guy. Ah, the creepy old guy at the truck stop. Oh, my God. Oh. Uh, I uh, know, sir. I don't know. I have a favorite um, Andrew. How about it, Andrew? I don't have a favorite uh, truck I don't have a favorite truck. Um, I, I, I used to drive a Kenneth. That was real nice. And then a, a month or two ago, they switched me out into a freight liner. And that also was nice. I can tell you, I think the Kenworth was a little more comfortable. The Kenworth had two armrests on the chair, one for each arm. And this one only has one on the on my right arm. And my left arm kind of hangs there. You know, I was talking to other truckers and like, oh, my left arm rests on the door. And I'm like, I got to reach over to hit the door. I'm not that big. I, I, I'm not that big. You got to be, I guess, a, a, a bigger guy to to fill this space here. But, I mean, not that I, I want to work. I don't want to grow into this chair. That's for sure. <laughs> but yeah, I got one arm that'll swing up and down like a chicken wing, you know, and the other arm, you know, rests on the arm, arm rest. So I feel lopsided. I feel a little bit lopsided. But I think a lot of the trucks are like that. So I ain't not going to complain. It's just something I, I, I observed. But other than that, the freight, this freight liner is a little bit bigger inside. I got room for a refrigerator. I don't use it for a refrigerator, though. I use it I use it to practice my tap dancing and my, my twerking, though, because it's a nice open space with a loud, clicky floor. And uh, the other side is uh, it's got a table that I can use to eat my salads and my boiled eggs because I'm got a fat guy trying to work my way down to my Bieber body. Some people say I want a summer bod. Some people say I want a, you know, whatever. I just say I want a Bieber bod. I want, when I take my shirt off, that looked like Justin Bieber. Because <clears throat> Justin Bieber used to be real cool. When I was younger, it's probably Justin Timberlake, but Justin Timberlake's old now, old like me. I need a Bieber body. I think that'll make my wife happy. Oh, you're so handsome, like Justin Bieber. <laughs> uh, all right, I'll never have a Bieber body, but that's all right. That's all right, as long as I got goals, right? It's healthy to have goals. All right, right now I'm empty. Um, right now I, I'm empty. I dropped my load in Fort Madison. I was carrying steel, uh, no, aluminum coils. And I dropped them off there, and then they asked me if I'd please drive across to, to Fort Madison, Fort Dodge, I mean, and pick up some scrap metal that's got to go to Kentucky. Hey, gravy ship. Something tells me uh, we've hung out before. Something tells me we've we're friends. Something tells me we've hung out before. Another stream. Same channel. New stream. Who this? <laughs> oh boy! I got my driver's license for trucking. My CDL back in 1999. I was really young, really young. And, um. I, I can't say I've been driving ever since, but I tell you what, I've been using this every time. Every time there's been financial situations in my life, I can always jump in a truck for a little while, fix the situations, and go back to what I was doing. Uh, it's always been a, a nice thing to have in my back pocket. All right, shy, shy, dude, dude, bro, what's up, my my guy? What's up, my dude? I'm a, uh, I um. I'm doing that thing where would you drive a semi truck every day for eight days, but you don't take a, a 36 hour reset and you got to wait till midnight every day before you can drive. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. 
across the whole freaking country. Um, the other day I had a few hours. I'm like, I had four hours on my clock. And then the next day I got eight hours. This morning I woke up and gave me nine hours and 13 minutes today on my clock. So um, I'm getting closer to home. I'm getting closer. And uh, I do appreciate everybody coming by and hanging out with me for a few minutes before they start their day or end their day or swipe on to a wonderful, brand new, juicy Mr. Beast video. Because you know what? I'm waiting for those too. Uh, but I appreciate you clicking on my stream and hanging out with me while Mr. Beast is uploading his videos. Uh, I don't know why you click on my videos other than you like me. And I'm hoping you like me and you appreciate me and you say, hey, you know what? That fat guy... That's my guy. That's my dude. Because I'm your dude. I got your back out here. I got your back out here. Oh, yeah. I'm a maniac. I'm a maniac. The dispatcher called me yesterday. I was unloading my last load. He's like, last load, and then you can go home. And I was unloading it, and the phone rings. And I look at my phone, and I'm like, oh, boy, that's the dispatch. What could that be? Did I screw up? Did I mess something up? And they go, can you do me a favor? And I'm like, oh, I know what that means. And my first thought is, more money, more money. I'm like, oh, wait, I already promised my family I'm coming home. I already had my heart set on it. I have my feelings. Or, and the other thing, I am got sad. I got real sad. I'm like, oh, my God, what did I do? I just accepted another run. After I accepted another run, after I accepted another run, and it's like my family keeps waiting for me. Like, and then I keep out there telling them, I'm sorry, sons. I'm sorry, boys. I'm sorry, family. I can't come home. And they go, why can't you come home, daddy? Okay. <laughs> they didn't say that. I didn't say that. I'm, I'm lying. But that, all that did happen, I told my wife it's just going to be a, a half a day later, and she's happy because I get to go home. And, and as long as I'm home enough to do my laundry and and um, take my wife out to dinner and um, and take a nap in my bed, in my own bed, before I jump back in this, this bunk back here. All right. All right, everybody. I'm alive, everybody. You're alive, everybody. And you're coming with me to Fort Dodge, Iowa. Fort Dodge, Iowa. You probably won't. You know, I left it said, when I left the truck stop, it said that I'm an hour and a half away from the place. And now that I'm driving, it's saying two hours now. That is crazy. Why would it say that to me? The traffic pick up or something? I'm 100 miles away. I'm 106 miles away. Why would it say two two hours? Unless there's, there's got to be something happened. Man. There's got to be something happened. Yeah, now it's saying two hours and 17 minutes to go. Now I'm saying 141 miles. Oh boy. Technology. I'm just going to blame the eclipse. Oh boy, DoorDash, man. I thought about doing that stuff. I thought about it. I thought, man, you know what? I'll be local. I can run 20 hours in a day if I wanted to. I don't think they study cap you. The thing is, I live in a town with 450 people. I think that there's probably 20 smartphones in the whole town. And so I'd have to drive to a city far away from my house. And then and the DoorDash there. But at least I'd be home every day. But um, gig work, man. I did gig work a lot in my life. And then at the end of it, I had nothing to show for it. So I was afraid that I would be hurting my family in the long run. Because they need health insurance and they need all that other stuff. They need all the stuff, all the stuff, all the stuff. Yeah, I, I, I had a glitch in my in the in the GP three and a half hour trip, but my other GP in forty five minutes. I'm like, which one do I take? So I took the forty five minute one and and I just took a risk. That maybe I'm I'm going to be driving on car roads instead of truck roads, but each road I got on there was more trucks on there. So let me know. GPS was just acting screwy. It's acting screwy today. So it's not nine hours on my clock, and uh, 
Man, I hope I can make it home today. I hope I can make it home. It sucked to lose one of my days off because I run out of time. I have to sit in a truck stop three hours away from my house. That, that happens. I spent a lot of free time yesterday that I was stuck at the truck stop Googling all the different scenarios that would help me get home with the with the DOT clock being empty. And there's no way I can get home. If I run out of time, even if I'm 20 minutes from my house, I have to pull over. I mean, I'll, I'll Uber home if that happens. But I, I, my schedule looked like it was going to put me about four hours away from my house when I ran out of time. And I can't afford to Uber for four hours. I mean, who can afford that? Somebody told me in the comments because I was uh, I made some videos about my situation and they're telling me, well, just catch a flight. Nothing. I am a trucker. I am a trucker. How am I going to catch a flight? That's I can't even I can't even afford Hardee's and it, I can't I have to eat the I, yeah I don't understand how people could just I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna jump on a flight. How are you gonna where are you gonna put your big rig? How, how are you gonna where are you gonna park? You're gonna big rig gonna how, how are you gonna park your big rig in an airport or yeah. There's really no way to get home when your clock runs out. You just gotta you just gotta stay on the side of the road and hope your family understands. <laughs> well, I talk about things all the time on here. And people are like, they must pay you. I'm like, no. If they were paying me, I, I, I would probably, I'd probably be wearing their like their logos or whatever. But DoorDash, man, DoorDash. I've seen people on the internet that stream their DoorDash. When they go and they deliver the food and the person reports to DoorDash that they didn't get it and they get their money back and the DoorDash guy is screwed and loses his job and and then it's all chaos, and then you confront them. I like when they confront them because it's always some some woman in an office somewhere, you know. And and, and the other office workers are looking at you like, "You did that? You did that? I can't believe you did that!" And then when you leave, like you know, when the DoorDasher leaves, they're all high fiving each other. You go, girl. You get that. You get that paper. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate you coming by out there in Colorado. Appreciate everybody hanging out for a couple of minutes this morning. Spending some time with this trucker out here driving across middle America. It says I'm passing a little town in Iowa called New Sharon. New Sharon. Hmm. Imagine you're not the New Sharon. How bad do you feel in town? Like, I guess what if I chop liver? <laughs> I was the Sharon. Now there's a new Sharon in town. She must have been hot to name it after her. She must have been one piece of age. Yeah. yeah. Going to bed out there. That's what they do. I just woke up. I had an 18-hour downtime on the side of the road. I had to stay down. I, I ran out of TOT clock at about, I don't know, 10 o'clock in the morning or something like that. And I had to pull over and wait till midnight. And then once I waited till midnight, I was ready to roll again. But then according to my schedule, I couldn't drop till 10 a.m. So I had to sit there and wait. You can't just start your clock whenever you want it. Because once you start your clock, that clock just runs and runs, even if you're not driving. But I couldn't risk it. I got to get home today. I got to see my family. Wow. Well, I got, although when I was during the pandemic, the camp when I was driving for it, they closed down operations. They got rid of all their drivers, all their mechanics, all their sales guys and everything. And, and um, I just sat that out. I sat out the whole pandemic. And I didn't set it out. I actually uh, built, a, I built a couple websites and created a revenue stream that way so I could survive during COVID. But I wasn't exposed to all that stuff. I didn't live in the city. I lived out in the country where we didn't have any mask mandates. We didn't have any any, any kind of restrictions. So 
Middle America, baby. Middle America. Middle America. I want to just do nothing all day. I want to just do nothing all day. But you know what happens when you do nothing all day? You turn into a fat, lazy bastard. That's that's what I was turning into. I turned into a lazy bastard with soft hands. I had my ball. I, I lost all my balls. All my confidence was gone. I was afraid of everything because I didn't test myself ever. I didn't push myself ever. And um, I became soft and wimpy. And my wife would look at me like I wasn't quite the man that I needed to be. I jumped in the truck, and within a month, my wife said, Ooh, touch me again because my hands are rough. You know, I'm making, I'm making shot call and stuff, big baller stuff every day. She's like, Oh, I like that. I'm like, oh, wow. It's being a man thing's working out for me. Being a computer engineer, a software guy is really working against my manhood. And so I dedicate my weekends only to, uh, or to some hours in the weekend only to my tech stuff, my websites, my social media. Because it's, it takes your manhood away. It's like the longer you sit in front of the computer, the more your body just produces estrogen. I was getting man boobs. That kind of, kind of stuff, you know, that's kind of bad. That's why every day I'm working on getting my just a Bieber body. Get my Bieber body back. Yeah, I know programming. Like right now, I can program my own system on here that starts and stops streams for me. And uh, if you ever start a stream, you know there's about 13 different things you got to set up before you can go live, and that all automated. It stops my stream, starts them. What else does it do? It does a text-to-speech. It reads everything from the chat right into my earbud. And also it does, um, on, on the weekends I set it up, where it, it responds to all the comments on my on my videos that I didn't get a chance to get through the week. Because I, I get, like every couple of minutes, I'll get, a, uh, to every few seconds, I get comments. And uh, on the road, I, I, I can't even read them, honestly, because I'm not allowed to touch my phone. So I I designed my own uh, autoresponder that I use. It plugs into the open AI system, so it uses AI. So I educated AI on, on, on what I do and, and all this other stuff, and so that when it responds, it, it tries to respond as I would respond out here on the road. But I don't lie about it. I tell everybody, look, if you get a comment throughout the week, it's me. But on the weekend, it's going to be AI because I want everybody to get a response. Everybody to get a response. Everybody as, as I can. Even the trolls. Especially the trolls. I think this is with the AI. When I get a troll and they're telling me how fat I am and how stupid I am, it's real polite. It has no emotion. It's real polite. And that's uh, something I'm not. You know, I, I mean, I'm polite because I don't want to be mean, but at the same time, I do sometimes throw a little bit of attitude on there. And I feel like I provoked them to come back and say something else. Uh, but it's at the end of the day, the AI, it, it, it responds better than I do. It tells them, thank you for watching the video. And I appreciate your feedback. And I'm striving to work better. Thanks for the comment. Please subscribe. And I'll do better. And I troll harder. And one day I'll get rid of my own opinions. And I'll, I'll adopt your opinions. And I'll do everything you want to do. Because I only make the videos for you. And I know you're a narcissist, and one day I'm going to be a good guy, and all you're going to think about is how we all have the same opinions. You used to make $5,000. Oh, my God, you're rich. You're rich. Y'all rich, bitch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, out there. Wobbly. Wobbly, I appreciate you hanging out. I appreciate you coming by and sharing a couple minutes of your day with us, or even just a couple seconds in a day. It all is the same. It all lets YouTube know, hey, go ahead and uh, push this uh, video out to more and more people every time somebody comes in here. Say, you know what? It's pretty cool out there, and this trucker's not so bad when you get to know him. Even though I use the word hero in my, my video description, that he's not that bad of a guy. Yeah. I used to title my streams with trigger words in there to attract the Karens so we can um, we can all have fun with them. But um, I backed off a few of the trigger words. It got a little aggressive. And I just use the word hero in there now. That's about as triggering as, uh, as I want to get these days. And it still works. Every single day I get uh, 
Karen's coming in here telling me I'm not allowed to use the word hero. Um, that I'm just a fat, lazy trucker, and I'm feeding my family like I'm supposed to. And if you're doing what you're supposed to, how could you be a hero? I get that argument every day. I get it every day. I speak good English. I have a speech impediment that I work on every day. I stand in front of the mirror and I tell myself how wonderful I am and how people like me and doggone it. And um, that's how it is out here on the road. Was I born somewhere else? I was born in America, middle America. I was born in a little town in Illinois. And then I moved to the big city when I was a kid, downtown Los Angeles. And I spent all my growing up years there, high school and all that other stuff. And one day I got married and had kids and said, I'm getting the hell out of here. And I moved to middle America again. Now I live in Kansas City, Missouri, where I could hang out with Tay Tay and Patty Mahomes. Patty Mahomes and Tay Tay. And uh, whoever, I don't know who else there is. People with barbecue sauce and stuff like that. You know, I hang out with barbecue sauce. <laughs> All right, we got Belize out there. Belize. I wish I could speak Spanish so I can hang out with you guys, but I speak American. 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 Just so you know, we're at 49,953 subscribers. If everyone in this stream right now subscribed, we'd hit 50,000 subscribers right now. If everyone in here. Just hit that subscribe button right now. They push this channel over 50,000 subscribers. We're 49,953. And I got a lot of faith that we're going to get there today. I checked the stats and we had 1,000 subscribers yesterday. And I have a feeling that if we do that again today, we'll be where we need to be. Where we need to be. Hey, t back. t back. That's a pretty cool name. t back. I think a t back is better than T-Bone. T-Bone sounds generic, but t back sounds cool. It's like somebody would order at a bar. Like, hey, I need a tea bag. Give me a tea bag. Give me a cold one and a tea bag. <laughs> I'm driving safe while stream. Well, you can see me drive. Am I all over the road? I mean, you can see if I'm in the lines. You can hear if I'm in the rumble strips. But I'll tell you the secret of how I do this is the technology I created myself. I haven't named it yet. I should probably name it and put it on the App Store for people to download. But. I created my own text to speech software here. It allows me to have everything you guys say. Uh, it does okay. It doesn't even uh, acknowledge when you put emojis or emoticons in the chat, but it reads everything you say into my ear, and uh, takes a little bit of you getting used to. But I could have probably wrote the code better. But I tell you what, fifteen hundred lines of code later, and I'm able to hang out with you guys while I drive. So it's like having a co-pilot. Anybody out there knows the anatomy of the anatomy of a semi truck? Um, when you have your mounted to the your camera mounted to the dashboard of the window, it's so far away from your face, you can't touch it or read it. So I was forced to uh, create text to speech. I wish it was already existing up there because I'm sure if someone else did it, they'd make it better. But I do what I got to do out here to survive, and uh, luckily I've got a background in computer science and and marketing and. And uh, that kind of stuff it helps me get through out here. I got everything automated. Everything's um, hands-free. Everything's hands-free and, and safe as can be. I've had um, I've had long, exhaustive talks with my safety team at this company, and we've uh, we've developed a plan on how to keep this legal and how to have fun with it. And at the same time, how I can promote the company out there. And, make the best of a situation out here. So what I do is anybody out here, which I do every day, I talk to drivers out here that are up and coming, they want to get their commercial licenses, and I, I say, listen, guys, you want to you want to test the waters out there and figure out what it's like to be a trucker, check out drivefs.com. That's where I work. That's the people that take care of me. These people out there take real good care of me, real good care. I've never had a, a company I worked for that was so in my business, making sure I was good, mentally healthy, physically healthy, financially healthy, you know, it's, it's a wonderful company. DriveFS.com. Even if you're not looking for a job, yeah, just check it out. That way it's in your memory. And uh, you know a little bit more about what's going on out here. What we get paid, what we do. And uh, maybe one day it'll inspire you to do something different out there.
Yeah, I, um, what I did was uh, when I was in high school, um, me and a couple of buddies of mine, we designed some software, and we were talking back before Facebook, before MySpace, all that stuff. And uh, it started us early on a path of uh, internet. Um, I believe it was 600 baud speed back then um, when I did it. This is before AOL. This is this is before Prodigy, before Earthlink. But this, you know, AOL started back then. It was AOL. You just used to be a phone number in the back of a computer magazine. Back then, if you wanted to get on the internet, you go to the back of a computer magazine, and there's a whole bunch of phone numbers you can call and dial up into. You just pick which one that was the localist number to you, and you dial up, and and you'd have to pay to be able to access it. But uh, my my knowledge has grown over the decades, and it's evolved. And now I own lots of websites and um, lots of social media out there. I own a lot of social media accounts. I call them social media accounts because I don't I don't build like influencer accounts because I think that if you build an influencer account, then you've got one account. It's very, very large, and I'm susceptible to things like policies and po politics. So if I say something or do something wrong, they silence me and take my account away, and that's, that's happened so many times. So what I do is I build um, I build communities now. For example, I'll build a Facebook group for a certain topic, and I will grow this group to hundreds of thousands of people. And so I'll own accounts. So I'll have hundreds of millions of people in my groups on just Facebook alone. I own groups for buying and selling things in little towns, buying selling equipment, uh, jobs and employment. Um, uh, I got a 2 million people Facebook group for TED Talks. I got uh, a million people group for photography, just random, just random stuff I built over the years and grow and grow and grow. And, and now um, when advertisers come to my websites looking for traffic, um, what I do is I, I they can post their ad on my website, and then I built an API where my website's connected to the Facebook groups, and and I I, uh, I have installed about 350 different Facebook uh, accounts that I bought off of India. I, I managed with rotating proxy servers, and when my customer puts an ad in my website for a small fee, the API pushes that ad to all my groups. And so it, it promotes them. Like if there's a guy in, in say, Kansas City that wants to sell hot dogs from his hot dog stand, he can go to my website, advertisekc.com, and for $10, he can put his ad on the website, push submit, and then my website will take his ad, and it'll share that into all of my 350 Kansas City buy-sell groups for local businesses. And and uh, it's only cost 10 bucks, but... Uh, it's a real cheap way for small businesses to advertise to a great big mass amount of people. And it shares the ads from my Facebook accounts, which means it puts no abuse on there. 10 or 15 groups so you can get your account restricted. I have one post from one account over and over again. So no accounts get abused. And Facebook's happy and I'm happy. I have proxy servers, so it looks like every account is from a different computer, even though I managed them all on one program and one, one thing. It gives you an idea of things to think about in this truck and the things I work out and I do when I'm at home. Like, I own a website called salatosser.com. I own a website. I, I won't even get into all my website names, but I own a lot of websites out there that I've owned since the 90s. And I, uh, I just use them sometimes. Uh, um, I use them to troll people. I, I, I use them to have fun and stuff like that. Uh, it's a real fun out here driving this truck. And sometimes sometimes the thoughts are getting stale and you get in your head and it's bad. So it gives me lots of things to think about. Real, real fun out here on the road. I thought I'd make a channel where I talk about it, how to, how to, how to do this stuff that I do. Like, I'll talk like a dummy because I am a dummy. I don't try to sound smart and I, try, I, don't, I, don't, I clearly don't try to look smart. I'm not trying to be smart. I just, I, I just, I try everything. I try everything so much that I fail so many times every single day that I know that I get my wins because I keep trying. I keep trying. This is my old YouTube channel. This is the channel you found. This is the channel you clicked on. That means that all my other YouTube channels you didn't like to click on, but this one, this one, this one did the trick. This one did the trick. 
about it out there, John. I see you. I see uh -huh. you out there, John. I see you, Jackson. I uh -huh. see you, Jackson. Hanging out there with this dude driving across Middle America right now. I'm on my way to Fort Dodge, Iowa. I don't think there's a fort there anymore, but I can tell you it's in Iowa. Been there a couple times. A nice little town with nothing there but a couple factories. There's not a truck stop or nothing. Farmland out here, nothing but farmland. Farmland, farmers and farmland. Farmers and farmland. Yeah, that's what we do. We drive through farmland every day, hang out, hang out with the strain. Hey, Knuckle. Hey, Knuckle. I'm driving on Iowa, the, I, the 163, I believe it says. I, don't, I think it's the Iowa 163 West. I don't know how long I've been on it, but... Yeah, it says I'm uh, 26 miles uh, east of Des Moines. And I got 115 miles to go before I'm in Fort Dodge. Two hours away. Two hours away. I got to get home. Got to get home before I run out of time. On my clock. How do I spell... How do I spell, how do I spell what, John, jo Jose, I'm sorry, Jose, um, I'll spell it for you. I'm going to try hard to spell it for you. I'm not a good speller guy, but I, I'll give it a try. I'll give it a, I'll give it a crack. I'll give it a swing. I'll give it a whirl. My last name is Whirl, so I can say I'll give it a whirl. My last, that's my last name, so I used to be my, what I say all the time, but people don't get it, so I've evolved to, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, sir, Rebob. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah, that'll probably do the job. Until it doesn't. And then you're fucked. I think that there's probably a lot of successful drivers out there that partake in the drogas, but I think that at the end, the drogas win the trucks on the side of the road. I remember I worked for this one company with a driver there that was that was friends with me, and the, the company knew I was friends with them, and all of a sudden I'm getting calls from the company saying, hey, do you know what's wrong with this person? They've been sitting over at this truck stop for about four days now, and they're not responding to their calls or nothing. Like, oh boy, drogas, drogas, oh boy, drogas. Wow, oh, my cunt, I'll tell you what, man. There's a lot of people out there that can rate with you. They take big old dumps out to Taco Bell, and that's just the way it is, man. Um, I'm glad you're being honest about it and sharing it with everybody. Let us know your experience with Taco Bell. I don't have that problem, man. I can eat Taco Bell every day, and I've done that. I've, I've stopped off at the Taco Bell. There was a truck stop I hit every day, and it had a Taco Bell 24 hours a day. I'd go in and I'd buy myself four bean burritos, baby, and I'd eat two of them, and I'd save the other two and warm them up later on for dinner. I was on a four burrito a day diet, and i tell you what, I ate it every single day. Never had that problem, but I'm a trucker out here. I guess it's going to come. I just, I'm too young for those kind of problems. Too young for that, but it's going to happen. I'm going to have to have a bucket in my truck just so I can eat Taco Bell. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, drugs are really cool, man. I mean, it seems like everybody cool out there is doing drugs. But what happens is, um, like, the, the, like, hey, I like Roger. He's cool. He's cool, cool, cool. And then, like, the next day or two days later, you're like, oh, I like Bobby, he's cool and cool, and then you forget about Roger, and like you don't realize why you forget about him. And then you're all out of Ted and, and Eric, and you're like all these cool guys, but do you never realize that first guy? How come he's not cool anymore? He he burned the frick out. He burned out too much droga. So it's like, hey, you know, drugs are really cool, but it's only cool right now. 
you're only going to be cool right now. And eventually you're going to be that dude that everyone's avoiding because he's just a problem. That's, that's not good. I don't want to be that dude. I want to be the dude that's well, you get the same thing with me. I'm getting older. I'm realizing, you know what? I'm only as good as my word. My word ain't poopies. My word ain't worth poopies if I'm on drogas, 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 drogas. Hey, Leo. Ah, Leo. Appreciate you. Checking out the stream today. I really appreciate you coming out and checking the stream out. So what's going on right now is, um, um, I work for a company out here called FNS, man. DriveFS.com. Um, I drive their truck. I run their freight. Um, that's who I work for. DriveFS.com. It's a real good company. Um, they support me. They support the channel. We work together on how I can help them. and They work together with me on how they can help me. And so I really appreciate the company I work for. I got nothing, nothing bad to say about them. Only good stuff out there. Um, some really good people out, the, out in this world, and it seems like the company FNS, they're they're really good at locating them and finding them. They, they hired me, and I'm the best. I'm the best they've ever been. Yeah. Yeah, we're doing real good out here. Don't get out here, Jose. I tell you what I do out here on the road. Last couple of weeks, I've only done salads, and I got this one truck that had a one truck stop they had a Denny's, and what, what I noticed is when a truck stop have Denny's in them, or a big restaurant chain like that, you can't buy that. The, out in the cold section, all that stuff's gone. If you want a salad, you got to go in the restaurant and pay the eighteen dollars versus the seven dollars. So, um, those kind of those instances, I just get there. They have a cup of boiled eggs, and I just eat some of that. I'm just trying not to. I'm not trying. I'm just trying to get. Like I said, I'm, I'm just trying to get my Bieber body back. Just trying to look like Justin Bieber. I flex my Bieber guns and get my Bieber body. Is that Justin Bieber? The ladies like Justin Bieber, and I want to. I want my wife like me, so I want to be Justin Bieber. Yeah. I guess it doesn't really matter who's, who, what name I use. I'm just trying to not be fat. Yeah, I get that. I get the impossible. I get that, man. I'm, I'm so fed up with them. I'm still fed up with them. I just, I, it's, you know how it is. It's like, how could you be, you're tired, you you know, you're hungry, you'll eat anything. That's true, and that's that's the problem. Um, It takes a lot of discipline. It takes a lot of discipline to not, to eat, and not eat that stuff. It's funny you say Bojangles, man, because I, I, I worked at Bojangles when I was a kid. I lived in Georgia, and it just for a little while, I was in trouble, and they, they sent me out of L.A., and then, and then, I got kicked out of Georgia. I had to go back to L.A. But what I remember most is I worked at Bojangles when I was there. And, like, all the time, I'm like, I got to go back and have some Bojangles. Got to go back. And then I, now I'm trucking over here, and I went to a Bojangles. Oh, like, this is crap. All they sold was chicken fingers. I'm like, what the hell is this crap? I'm 20 years of my life, I'm out there fantasizing about this Bojangles only to find out it's a piece of crap. It's like me and your hero, you know? It's always bad to hit, meet your hero. It's always bad. You always find out that they're not. They're not what you dreamed about. Hey, Noah. Thanks for clicking on the stream today. I'm out here in Iowa right now. About 100 miles um, outside of where i got to go, Fort, Fort Dodge. Um, I'm, uh, I'm probably 20 minutes uh, east of Des Moines, Iowa. Des Moines, Iowa, where I'm going to hit Des Moines and I'm probably going to cross the 80, hit the, go up north to uh, Fort Dodge. Fort Dodge. Fort Dodge. Yeah, I ran out of time on my clock the other day and I had to dip over into a, a Walmart. And I went into Walmart. I haven't been in a Walmart in a long time. Freaking piss bottles everywhere and they're trash and bags of poop everywhere. I'm going to really hard on those guys out here to try to find a spot, but I went to that Walmart, and of course, I had to go check out the salad aisle, and I saw that all their salads there are like $2 and $3. I'm 
I'm like, what the hell? I'm spending eight dollars at the truck stop every time. But I, well, so I was able to stock up on some Gatorade and some salad there. God bless that place when, when you need it, you know. McDonald's. I can appreciate that. Yeah, I appreciate that out there. Am I close to the 80 truck stop out here? I passed by it uh, a couple times uh, driving to from uh, Des Moines to another D word. <laughs> they got a lot of D words out here. And uh, Dubuque, I think it was Dubuque. Dubuque or Davenport or maybe it's Dubuque. I don't, I'm not sure. I didn't pull over. I didn't pull over. I, I, I try to, when I pull over, it's going to be spring. Get on and off or off and on real quick. If I'm off that highway for more than half an hour, I won't get off on that exit again. If I, if I have to pull over and there's like a bunch of stuff there, I'll just do what I got to do on the off ramp and get back on. Oh boy, we are less than 25 subscribers away from the 50 thousand subscriber mark guys i guys and girls man and pronouns i get you i get your alphabet pronouns and I'm, I'm 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 with you guys i'm with you but yeah we are 24 subscribers away from fifty thousand guys i guys because i appreciate every single one of you that took a chance on that click with me i really appreciate everybody that's clicked on my stream and i really appreciate all that stuff i i it's hard to it's hard to uh show you emotion out here while I'm streaming. You can't see my face, and that's because I'm fat, and that's okay. We'll get through that. I'm working on my beaver body. One step at a time, guys. I'll be there. One day I'll be on camera, and you guys are like, oh my goodness, who's that trucker out there? Oh my God. Is he married? Yes, ladies, I'm married. Yes! I'm married. I won't put my my wife on the live stream because I had a channel where it was me and my wife, and my wife decided she no longer wanted to be on the internet, so I had to delete that channel. It was heartbreaking out there. It was like killing a, a baby killing a child. And I'm like, I can't do that anymore. I'm not going to lose anymore. I'm not going to lose any of my creations. <laughs> so I learned not to put my wife on the stream anymore because women are fickle. They change their mind. You know, one day I'll be on camera on this channel and you're going to be like, oh man, what happened to the fat guy? That was me. That was me. I was that fat guy out here in the road. Fat guy in a little truck. So this is a big truck, but I'm fat. And it makes it look small. All right, I lied. I'm not fat. I'm not fat. I'm big boned. That's all. That's all. I'm big boned. All right. I appreciate you subbing out there. Yeah, I'm the same way. I blow by it. I'm the guy that says, oh, there's a, something coming up in five miles. I'm all excited about it, and I'm all getting myself ready. Then the exit comes. I'm like, ah, I just go to the next one. And I blow past exit after exit after exit. Man, look at my feeling. Oh, my God, I'm almost to the red. I should have pulled over a long time ago. And, you know, I'm that guy. I'm that guy. I'm not scared to say it, though. I ain't afraid. I ain't scared. All right, Jose. Jose. All right, Jose. Appreciate you coming by these three out there, Jose. That's not racist, buddy. That's not racist. I'm, I'm, I don't know why I said that. I'm going to have to edit that out. I just felt like saying it in my half Hispanic, half Russian accent. All right. That was a little, that was a little stereotypical and racist, and you can hold that against me. Oh, I, I understand. I deserve it. I deserve the hate from that one. I deserve it. I, I'm appropriating accents. All right, boys and girls. We are 20. We're a mere 20 away from that beautiful number of 50,000. I remember when I was hitting 25,000, I said, I'm halfway to halfway. When I hit 25,000, halfway to halfway. Well, guess what, boys and girls? We're almost halfway. Halfway. We're almost halfway at 49,980 subscribers. Can you believe that? Can you believe that I've almost got 50,000 people that cared enough to click that link and take a chance on this whole guy? They took a chance on that subscribe. They took a chance. Hopefully they didn't regret it. Hopefully. But I make videos every day, guys and girls. I make videos every day. This is a stream. This is on a dash cam. Uh, I make videos every day. I need to use my smart glasses. I've been using my smart glasses for a couple of years out here, just recording videos about what I see, what I do, my take on things. And my take's not 
not the typical take on things. I make some videos out there that make you think. I make some videos out here that make you go, oh my goodness, have I just watched the stupidest video I've ever seen in the whole world? I think I did. <laughs> You're going to walk away from my videos. You're going to swipe away from my videos feeling different. Different. Like, oh my goodness. Did I just see that? Yes, you did just see that. And you clicked like on it and you shared it with everybody you know. Because you want to be that guy. You want to be that guy that shared that video first, made them laugh because you found that video, not them. You shared it with them on your timeline. You're the funny guy for sharing my videos. Nope. My company pays me a percentage. I'm on a percentage out here. I get 30%. I get 30% of whatever I move. So sometimes, like right now, I'm running empty. And I ain't get paid in jack squat. That's why I have supplemental income. That's why I got my websites out there. That's why I got my YouTubies, my live streams, and um, my social medias and stuff like that to make sure that I'm getting paid around the clock. Cause I started this run yesterday morning. I left uh, empty, and I've been I've been out here for over 24 hours without getting paid. Just cruising onto my pickup spot over here, and uh, I don't have a problem with it. That 30% adds up. That 30% adds up. Sometimes I do. I wish I got paid per mile, but. That's another, that's a whole other battle. That's a whole other monster. Oh, was it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of drunk drivers out here. A whole lot of drunk drivers. A whole lot of drunk drivers. I tell you what, I seen, um, I was at the truck stop with this guy. I see this guy inside the truck stop in front of me, and he. I'm like, oh, he's going to just grab himself something to snack on or something. But no, he grabbed himself a whole case of those little shots of fireball whiskey. Like a whole bunch of them, like all in like this bundle. I don't know what it's called. And I'm like, oh, well, that guy's going to go have a, he's going to get on his boat or whatever he's going to do. He's going to go out there and have a great time today. And I'm going to work and that sucks. And uh, he leaves and I, I get my thing. I get my Gatorades and I go out there and yep, he's climbing into a big rig. I see these bottles all over the truck stop. They're, they're crushed, though. People drive over them, of course, but I, I see them everywhere. People just drinking, taking their shot of whatever it is. Most of the time, it's just fireball. Like I don't know what it is about that fireball. I ain't never had it. I don't drink. I don't do drugs. But um, I get it, man. I, I get it. I get what addiction. I get addiction. I, I'm addicted to computers. I'm addicted to coding. I'm addicted to all this stuff, so I get it. Mine, I think, is a little healthier. I feel bad for them. Like, man, I can't imagine sitting in your truck when I got to have it. I got to have it. And, and have it to go in there and the shame of buying it. You know, 6 o'clock in the morning and you're buying a case of Fireball. I feel bad for them. I ain't judging them. I ain't looking down on them. I wish them the best. I wish them the best, not the worst. All right. Enjoy that pre-trip out there. Enjoy that pre-trip out there. You only got you only get to do it once a day, man. Enjoy every, every <laughs> enjoy every minute of it. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, it's one of those days out here. I've lost my mind and I'm going crazy and I'm taking you guys with me. I'm taking you all the way. I'm on a highway, ladies and gentlemen, with a freaking stoplight out here. How many Karens does it take to get a stoplight on the highway? How many Karens out there that got a job they weren't qualified for that are dying to affect some sort of policy to make it look like they're doing something in town only to put a stoplight on the highway? Mm. Tell you what, Karen. This stoplight out here just reminds me of how smart you are and how you care about the world and just put a stoplight on the damn highway. Let's put a stoplight on the highway. Oh, hell, let's put two of them. Why not? Oh, boy. Somebody imposed your pin. I don't know if you saw the video where I was electrocuting smugglers. I made a whole series of videos where people get in my trailer. I electrocute them with the, the device. I called it the Stinger. But I think the subscribers uh, rebranded it called the Shocker. They thought it was more funny, but um, it uh, 
It's a good one. It invo involves pulling pins and stuff like that. You gotta subscribe and check it out. It really upset a whole lot of people out there because I'm electrocuting smugglers. Like, there could be babies in there. There could be babies in there. Yeah, but those babies are criminals. They're in my trailer illegally. That's my stuff. You're going to die. Oh, cow, yeah, one of them uh, kettle prods, kettle thingies. Yeah, I, uh, I got three million volts of electricity I rigged into the trailer where I got a lever. When you're in my trailer and I don't want you in there, I pull that lever and he drops you to your knees. Yeah, but I videotaped that stuff. And it's shocking. Be like, this guy is leading to take this guy's driver's license away. It's illegal. Be like, he's recording his federal crimes. He's, he's going to go to jail for murder. Am I? I'm still here. I'm right here, baby. Check my video. Check my video. You can find me. Felon babies. That's right. If you're a baby and you're, you're in my trailer being a smuggler, you get what you get. You get what you just hopefully you got a diaper on because I'm about to make you crap your pants. Some kind of fierce way. It'd be the fastest crap you ever had. I pull that lever and you're squirting the walls, buddy. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe not. I don't know. You got to see the videos. You got to see the videos. And, uh, let me know if you think that I was right or wrong by shocking, shocking the illegal smugglers back there. Ooh, my backpack open. My Gatorade dumped under my under my pedals. That's dangerous. All right, now I am on the 65, the I-65, Iowa, Iowa 65. I'm heading towards the 80. I know when I hit the 80, I'm getting close to Fort Dodge, getting, getting up there in Des Moines, Des Moines area. And, uh, we all know how much fun we have in Des Moines. <laughs> I lied. I don't know what fun to have in Des Moines. That's right. Every time you're in Laredo, Laredo, every time I'm down there on the 10, anywhere on the 10 freeway, you got to check the load. Check it. You always got to check it. You know, sometimes you, you got to check the load when you don't want to check it, but, you know, I've had to check the load and heard noises in there. Get in there find out i got a bunch of luchadors back there. I don't know what the hell the luchadors are back in my trailer for. But, um, it's a hell of a COVID mask. You open a trailer and see a bunch of luchadors standing there. I slam that door shut. I slam it shut, lock it up with them in there. And I take it on a real bumpy road for for a little bit. Luchadors are big dudes. They're bigger than me. I don't mess with the luchadors. I know better. They're going to wrestle me. Slam me into the mat. Luchadors fight dirty. Let's say the WWE. Oh boy. Oh boy, we're on this uh ah US sixty five. I can't tell if I'm going north or south. My GPS doesn't tell me that. But I can tell you it's forty degrees out here and I'm doing sixty and a sixty five. That's probably why my trailer was shaking. But after I electrocuted one of these luchadors, I was able to take his mask from him. And I was able to take his power from him. And now I have the mask. I have the mask. And uh, I have I have named my luchador character. He's called Lot Lucha. And he, um, he creates havoc. And he takes down the lot lizards at the truck stops. And I, uh, I built a channel for him, Mont Lucha channel. Um, and I'm working on content on that because I, I want everybody at the truck stop to fear me as Lot Lucha. And if you, if you, if you Google, if you Google or YouTube Lot Lucha, um, I'm trying to own the phrase where if anybody else uses Lot Lucha, then that I'll still come up number one. But, um, I've been real busy. I haven't really created much content around Lot Lucha, but it's one of the characters I'm working on. And I hope that people enjoy 
psycho crazy luchador running around the truck stop with his pants on. I said on because I'm not a pervert. Oh, you just add them to your POL, huh? Take pictures. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People ask me in the comments, they're like, how do the smugglers get in your trailer if you just pull off the dock just now? Why do you check for smugglers when you just pull away from the dock? I don't know, man. They just get in there. <laughs> I don't know. Don't think too deeply into it. Remember, if you're going to talk to me and hang out with me, you got to lower your expectations because I'm a trucker. I'm not a doctor. I know I need to. I thought about it. I thought about when I hit 100,000. I'm thinking, but maybe, you know what? I've got people that are sending me um, art that they're making. And some of the art that I have um, on my channel, like the background on the main channel, was built by this kid that said, hey, you want to use the image I make for your channel? And uh, I used that one on there. Um, the main picture on my channel, I just went to OpenAI and had AI create the, the perfect trucker. Um, I figured I was, not, I was I'm American. I'm blonde hair, blue eyes and stuff. I thought that maybe that might be a little off-putting to everybody out there, which is the majority that hates people that look like me. So what I did was I went to AI and said, hey, AI, make me the most typical American trucker looking guy in the truck, smiling, and it's through the window. And then it spit me out the image that you see. And I use that because of people that look at me, they, they click away. They're like, I can't stand this guy. And I get it. I can't stand me either. I don't own a mirror in here. And I don't take selfies. I don't take selfies. Yeah, I got it. I got it. What I do is I got some things I say a lot. Like I, I, I yell out here. I say I'm screaming and screaming. And uh, I do uh, where I'm honking and rolling because I do a lot of honking. A whole lot of uh, honking the horn out here. I actually got calluses on my fingers from honking this horn so often. But every time somebody comes in and I try to I try to give a shout out. The horn. Unless I'm in an area that's uh, it's not it's not good to do that, like freaking downtown St. Louis. Right honk, they shoot. <laughs> can't have that. You can't have that. All right, I'm about to jump on this 35 North up here. 35 North, Minneapolis. Atlanta. Atlanta's one of those, man. Uh, Na Nashville. Uh, Nashville, Memphis, those are some really bad ones. There's some really bad places where I, I don't make any noise. <laughs> I get the Jake break off. I'm just quietly driving. I made a video about this recently. If you're driving through like St. Louis, don't try to do the speed limit. Don't do that. Because the car next to you might think you're trying to race them and they'll shoot you. They have too much pride. Just go slow. Don't make eye contact. America. 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 Don't make eye contact. They'll shoot you. <laughs> oh, boy. What do you do when you're American in America and you got to hide? Because the fact that you look American is triggering to non-Americans. Therefore, you must hide. Hide your face, mofo. Hide your blue eyes. Hide your blonde hair because they're coming for you. I used to live in Los Angeles, downtown Los Angeles. And, um, uh, about 2016, 2017, uh, people were getting drug out of their cars that looked like me in intersections that beat right in front of everybody. Um, people that just, all they had to do was look like me. And uh, it was triggering these people that didn't look like me. And this is a real thing. It wasn't on the news. This was a real thing that I saw. And so me and my family, we're all blonde hair, blue eyes. We packed our shit and moved to middle America. Go to farm. Found myself six acres farm, and uh, it's safe. It's so safe. 450 people in my town. Not one act of violence in, since 2017. Not one, not one bad apple. 
Yeah, I hate my kids, man. Imagine my kids are going to public school in Los Angeles right now. You're talking about blonde hair, blue eyed kids with two parents? <laughs> They're going to get their ass kicked every day. I mean, I was growing up in, in the 90s in Los Angeles, blonde hair, blue eyes, and like we have PE outside, and you're sitting on the blacktop. You have these spots you sit on so they can take roll. And I remember some kids that don't look like us walking by and just just teeing off on us with their feet, like kicking us like soccer balls as they're going by. Nobody would do nothing. Teachers wouldn't do nothing. Nobody would do nothing. There's only five of us that have blonde hair blacks in the whole school. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Just rise up? Well, we're going to fight back? I stopped going to school. I'd walk to school. I'd walk in, go to homeroom. They'd, they'd uh, check me in, and I'd walk right through the school and climb over the fence and leave. There ain't no way I'm going to sit there and get beat up every day by people that, just because of the way I look, tell me I'm racist. Tell me I'm the problem in the society. I'm the reason why everyone's poor or something. I'm like, I'm a 15-year-old white kid missing half his teeth, wearing dirty clothes because I'm freaking homeless, moving around all the time. And I'm the problem. I'm being to be kicked in the back. Because you get kicked in the back, you don't know what's going on. You're just sitting there. Down my head down, trying not to make eye contact with anybody. And then you pull your head up and you see someone else get kicked out. And you're like, oh my God, that dude ran up to him and reared back in mid to just kicked him like he was like he was like a can that was getting kicked down the street. Man, you can hear that thump. You're like, okay, I, 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 I'm crying now in high school. I'm crying. And I'm walking up the stairs to go back to the locker room to put my clothes back on. And I can't go in the locker room because I hear people getting jumped into a freaking gang. You ever heard somebody get jumped and jumped into a gang? You got 15 guys beating on one guy. And you hear this like chest crushing kicks and blows. And their, their body parts are smacking up against the tile walls. And, and you can just hear them. They're not trying to cry because they're trying to be tough. And you just hear them grunting and everyone's just pounding. It's like... What the hell am I living in this city for? Why the hell would anybody want to live in a city that looks like me? Why would anybody want to live in the city if you look like me? It's a crazy world there, guys. Move to middle America. Just move away from the city. Run. Run, son, run. And don't stop running until you find a neighborhood. Where they look like you. That sounds racist, but white flat is what it is. Make sure you like and subscribe. Make sure you subscribe to the video. You never know when it's going to end and when it ends. If you're not subscribed, it's gone forever. Gone forever.